All right, and so again, it's your favorite science teacher. And what we're going to do is we're going over wave interactions and electromagnetic waves. All right, and so without that, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right. All right, and make sure I have this. I might close this out. All right, did already. All right, and so we're going over wave interactions. All right, so starting off, we've already gone over this. This was in the part one of my video. All right, uh, wave interactions. A reflection is, uh, again, when a wave hits a surface and then it bounces back, all right? Again, all devices should be put up. Again, put up in a pocket or in a book bag, okay? All right. And so a wave, um, and so a wave that can't pass through a substance, it either it bounces off of it, um, or again, it, it bounces off of it, and it's flipped and or turned upside down. Sound waves or echoes are sound waves that are reflected. Echoes are sound waves that are reflected. All right, our next slide. The bending of a light as it enters a new medium. That was a refraction. And the reason why we see this is because when we look at it with our eyes, light travels at a different speed when it's in liquid than when it's in air. And so therefore it takes longer to get to our eyes when we see it in the liquid. And so this is going to be, uh, this happens because the wave is moving slower than one side than the other side. So it's moving slower through the liquid than through the air here. Um, diffraction. <laughs> diffraction is the bending of a wave as it passes around a object or passes through uh, a narrow opening, all right? And as you can see, here is our narrow opening right here. Um, and here's a, this is an aerial view of two rocks and the uh, waterways going through. And the waterways make it through and they start off small, but then they get very big. They spread out. Uh, yeah, it looks like a shell right here. Those waves spread out, all right? And this is a uh, well, light does this too. Like, you, yeah, again, if you're at night and, and you wake up in the middle of the night and you don't want to wake the people up, oftentimes you might cover the bottom of their door because you don't want the light to go underneath it. Because if it does, it will spread out in the room. All right. So you can try to help people stay awake, stay asleep. All right. And so, again, covering because uh, the light, if it goes underneath the door, under the door, uh, it will actually go into the other room and spread out. All right, so the bending of a wave as it moves past, as it moves past and around an object or through a narrow opening. Interference, all right? This is where your waves combine to make a bigger wave. In fact, I have a drawing on it that I want you to see because you can't see yours too well. And so I wanted to make sure you got it really well. We gotta draw that down. Yes, you're gonna have to draw this down there. All right, so Constructive interference and destructive interference. Constructive are when the waves are in sync and they come together and then they make a bigger wave. Uh, destructive interference is when the waves are out of sync and they come together and then they collide and they produce, they cancel each other out some degree. All right, so like where this one has its crest, its trough is hitting it. Where this one's trough, its crest is hitting it. Whereas this one's trough, this is its crest is hitting it. They're canceling each other out. All right. That's destructive interference. And I'm looking at a test this week about this concept. So make sure you're learning this stuff right here. All right. Make sure you're learning this. A test. All right. Hold on. I'm just writing something out real quick. All right, um, 
So continuing on, uh, our next slide. What's some of that question? All right. Um, ultrasound, okay. Ultrasound is again, uh, a type of, it uses sound to produce uh, a sound frequencies that are no higher than our normal pitch, that are higher than normal hearing. All right, this is ultrasound, and it can be used to produce uh, images. Now, these images can be used to produce an image of an organ or a baby, but they also can be used to produce images of, of things that are underneath the water. Okay, ultrasound can be used to produce things underneath the water. In fact, it was very significant what has, how sonar was used in World War II. Without the use of sonar, uh, the, uh, the Allies could have lost World War II because they would not have been able to get across the Atlantic Ocean, especially with the U.S. The U.S. was trying to get across the German U-boats, which were their submarines, were sinking so many ships, all right? Uh, and that with the discovery of sonar, where they sent these sound waves under the water and it, produced, it bounced back and produced an image so they could tell what's under the water. All right? They could tell where a, a, uh, a submarine is and it bounces back fast and they can produce an image of that. That's very significant. Similar process happens with ultrasounds. Sends this sound signal, this ultrasound, high frequency sound, and it goes into the into the in the woman's body or the even a, a male's body because some people do an ultrasound of their heart. All right, it sends it, hits the hard surface, then bounces back to the probe. And the probe uh, takes it. The computer uh, compiles how long it took to go to the object and then come back, and it produces an image of it because some might go a little bit deeper, and and when they come back, they can they can say it took longer for this uh, wave to come back. Therefore, it must be something hard must be right here. And it must be, and it gives you an idea what the shape looks like, okay? And so that's how ultrasound works. And the same thing happened with sonar, all right? Um, the Doppler effect. Okay. With the Doppler effect, um, the Doppler effect is where you hear a higher pitch sound a higher pitch sound when an object is approaching and a lower pitch, I'm gonna change it and I'm gonna fix that up here in a second here. A lower pitch sound when the object is moving away, when the object is moving away. And when we say pitch, that's like how high a voice is or how high a sound is um, and how high. Um, which has a higher pitch? When I, my first sound or my second sound? Oh. The first pitch, pitch is higher. And so with the Doppler effect, what they're saying is, is that when something is approaching you, it's gonna have a higher pitch sound. But when it's going away, it's going to have a lower pitch sound. Here is our example. I have a short video right quick, real quick with this. All right. That's not what it wants to do. Uh, there it is. And as it as it goes by and goes farther away, it has a lower and lower pitch. It's not as it's not as high. I huh. Yeah, with the waves traveling towards you, as the object is moving towards you, 
they're also being pushed together a little bit tighter. But when they're moving away and the thing that's making the sound is going away at the same time, that makes the sound waves a little bit farther away. And that makes them have a lower frequency. And therefore, they have a lower pitch sound. All right. And so here's our picture right here. Yes, the, again, so the lower the frequency, the lower the pitch, all right? And so that's exactly right. So the lower the frequency, the lower the pitch, the higher the frequency. And as, like I said, as the ambulance is coming towards somebody, the waves are kind of bunched together, all right? Making you have a higher pitch. But when it's going away from you, the waves will be, since it's still making waves the same around, the same speed, it's just the waves will be, since it's moving away, they're going to be a little bit further away from each other. And so that's why it's got a lower pitch. All right. Uh, the next thing here, hearing. All right. And this is one of our central questions. How does hearing work? Okay. And we kind of already said it. All right. Uh, sound waves come into the ear canal and they hit to your eardrum. All right. And they cause vibrations on your eardrum. All right. And that causes these three bones, which are the smallest bones in your body. All right, yes, I'm gonna zoom in right now. The three smallest bones in your body is the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. These are the three smallest bones in your body. All right, they're right behind your eardrum. And they cause vibrations and they put vibrations, they amplify the sound and cause these vibrations on the cochlea. All right, inside the cochlea is a liquid with hair cells all on the inside. When, though, when the hair cells are vibrating because of the, the liquid being hitting it, it causes an electrical signal. It causes ions to move into the hair cells and cause an electrical signal to move in the hair cells. And then it sends an electrical signal to your auditory nerve, which is here. And it, you inter your brain interprets the sound. All right. And so I can hear like the different voices and the different sounds and the different pitches of everybody's voice. And I can tell whose voice that is because my brain will say that pitch and that sound is typically Christian voice. Yes. Oh, uh, so when that person's running, they hear so much. Does it mean that they're born with that one? Body? Yeah, well, oftentimes this, uh, this cochlea is an issue. And so they have issues with their cochlea. And some people can have cochlear implants, and which we're going to get into just a second here. All right, they I can be. So we're going to talk, see what this right here. Let's look at this real quick first, so you can see what I'm talking about. I have a good video that I, I found last night, and that I wanted to share with you here. All right. Have you ever wondered how sounds make their way from the source all the way to your brain? Take a trumpet, for instance. When it's played, it makes sound waves in the air. The outer ear catches the waves, which then travel through a narrow passageway called the ear canal. The sound waves reach the eardrum, which is a membrane roughly half the size of a dime. They make the eardrum vibrate which in turn vibrates three tiny bones called the malleus, incus, and stapes. These bones amplify or increase the sound vibrations and send them to the cochlea. The cochlea is shaped like a snail and is the size of a garden pea. It is filled with fluid and the sound vibrations make this fluid ripple, which creates waves. Air-like structures called stereocilia sit on top of hair cells and are grouped together as hair cell bundles inside the cochlea. The hair cells inside the cochlea ride these waves and the hair bundles are moved. The hair bundle on top of the hair cell turns these movements into electrical signals. As the hair bundles are moved, ions rush into the top of the hair cells, causing the release of chemicals at the bottom of the hair cells. The chemicals bind to the auditory nerve cells and create an electrical signal, which travels along the auditory nerve to the brain. Different hair cells respond to different frequencies of sound. The hair cells at the base of the cochlea detect higher pitched sounds, such as a piccolo or flute. 
the hair cells toward the top of the spiral detect progressively lower pitched sounds, such as a trumpet or trombone. At the very top or apex of the spiral, the hair cells detect the lowest pitched sounds, such as a tuba. The auditory nerve carries the electrical signal to the brain, which interprets the messages as sounds that we recognize and understand. All right, and so I thought it was a beautiful video explaining how, how hearing occurs, all right? How hearing occurs and so that your brain recognizes things and then how it turns the sound wave into uh, chemicals, uh, chemical signals, and those chemical signals turn into electrical signals, all right? So it does like energy transformations here, all right? Uh, and so that's how our hearing occurs here. Um, and I believe when people start to become deaf, I believe those hair, the hair cells that are inside that cochlea are damaged. Yeah. All right, they be, they become damaged here. I want, I want to check that a little bit later, but I believe that's the situation with that here. All right, uh, continuing on our, with our deals here, reproduce sound. Uh, reproduce sound, uh, how does reproduce sound work? Again, when we have like, when I play music off my phone, all right, I got some music right here. I'm gonna play my. I like that song. All right. My love opened the door to your heart. All right. All right, well that song, how do I get that song out of this phone? It starts off as what? It does not, it starts before it comes to sound waves. It starts off. It uh, it does not count as an electromagnetic. It starts off as electrical. Well, you could say it starts off as electromagnetic. I have to receive it from Apple. Apple sends me the uh, signal, the, the electromagnetic, and then it turns into electrical signals. And then those electrical signals work across the speaker. Remember, a speaker has two magnets, an electromagnet. And that causes the material of the speaker to vibrate. They have a, a tweeter uh, uh, and they also have a bass and it causes it to vibrate and it produces a specific sound. The high pitch, the, the voices typically. The, the, the bass is gonna be the bass right there here. So. If they do what? All right, and again, so they scream, they can, it does damage your ear, but we're saying this, this is how sound is to converted from like, if we want recorded sound, like that song I like. Uh, my love opened the door to your heart. Let my love open the door to your heart. Those electrical signals are sent to the speaker and the speaker uh, with the electromagnet and the permanent magnet make the speaker move back and forth. And that produces sound uh, based off of those electrical signals. All right. And that produces the reproduced sound that we have. Um, and that's how our, again, when we call on people on the phone, that does the same thing. It changes our voice into electrical signals. And then it goes through electromagnetic waves, gets to somebody else's phone, turns back to electrical signals, turns back into sound waves by the movement of those magnets. Yes. So, so I got car speed, right? Mm -hmm. I got subs in my uh, trunk. Uh -huh. And it's, uh, it's producing a whole bunch of bass. Mm -hmm. So I put tweeters in there so I can hear more of the words and hot bit noise. Yes, that's what it is. That's what the call is. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So that is what we're trying to say with this here. So we're working at that. Now, the last part I want to teach about is electromagnetic waves. All right. Electromagnetic waves are. And I'm going to write it right here, electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic radiation. And I could abbreviate it as EMR. Electromagnetic radiation, I might abbreviate it as EMR. All right, electromagnetic radiation uh, is um, is 
examples of it. The best way to is examples. We've already said it. Light waves. X-rays. X -rays. All right. Gamma rays. Radio waves. All of those are examples. And it acts, uh, it's going to be a, um, it's going to be a changing, um, it's going to be act as a transverse wave, electromagnetic ra radiation. Electromagnetic radiation acts as a transverse wave. We went over transverse wave. Transverse waves have crests and troughs. as a transverse wave. It does not require a medium. Electromagnetic waves do not require a limb. E electromagnetic waves do not, waves do not require, I'm gonna take those bullets off in just a second here so I can get rid of them here. Do not require a medium. What is a medium? What the wave goes through. It does not require a substance for it to go through. Okay. Whereas a lot like sound requires a substance for the wave to go through. Electromagnetic waves do not. An example of that is like when uh, when light gets from the sun to the earth, it travels 93 million miles without traveling through air liquid or solids. It goes from the sun all the way to us without traveling to anything. That means it has no medium. It doesn't have a medium, all right? And so if it doesn't, again, that's what we mean by no medium. It does not require a medium. It can go through a medium, but it does not require one. On the other hand, mechanical waves are waves that require that require a medium example sound waves water waves waves in a rope earthquakes I like the spacing. I don't like how you space them out there. Sound waves, water waves, all of those are waves that require a medium. That's what a mechanical wave is. And we're going to see that electromagnetic radiation acts like a wave and like a particle. All right. Did we get that? Let me go back. Did we get that? If you have your device on, I do hold you at the end, so make sure you don't have it out. All right. Um, <clears throat> all right, so that's what we have right here. Last slide, and, <clears throat> and it's this one right here. Uh, it says electromagnet uh, waves and particles. Electromagnetic waves act like waves and they act like particles. Uh, we say they act like waves, and there's an experiment that helps show this here. This is called the double slit experiment. The double slit experiment. And you're, it's called that. It's called the double slit experiment because uh, it ha it's a, an experiment where there is a dark area and there's a light that comes out and there's two small slits. All right. And when those light comes out of it, it's called the double slit. Let me fix it here. Double slit 
experiment here. Uh, let me change that to 14. All right. And with this double slit experiment, it's where you actually have this. And I've done this experiment before. All right. It's where you have um, basically, uh, and I, this is what I did with it. I did like a flashlight and I have a flashlight covered and I have out, covered with aluminum foil. And I have these two small holes in the aluminum foil and the light will go through those two small like holes that are made of pins. The light will go through both of those little holes. But when it goes through those holes, some of the waves combine and make these bright bands. And some of the waves combine and make these dark bands. All right. And so basically, again, here's a metal sheet of paper. This again, this is what we use that aluminum foil. And the light, you have a light source that goes through here and it goes through both these little holes. But when the light goes through both of the holes, the light waves combine. And, and produces when they combine and make and they combine and they have, they're in sync, they make a bright band. But when they're combined and they're not in sync, they make a dark band. The bright bands are constructive interference. Are constructive interference. The dark bands are destructive interference. So the bright bands are constructive interference and the dark bands are destructive interference. All right. And so that's what you see right here. This is a bunch of bright and dark bands that is being produced because light behaves like a, like a wave. All right. It behaves like a wave. All right. And so that's how, again, so this is how we, we describe light and electromagnetic radiation to act like a wave and like a particle. And the why we describe it to act like a wave is because when light goes through these two tiny holes, the light waves combine and make, uh, make bright bands. But when the light waves kind of combine and make a dark band, they kind of destruct each other like a water waves that would get in there. They make a dark band. And so this experiment is evidence that light behaves like a wave, not just like a particle, but acts like a wave. This, and this is called the double slit experiment. And here are some pictures over on here. Uh, the double slit experiment, you can see a lot of people showing this exact same thing here. All right, here's the double slit experiment. Said Wikipedia. Beautiful picture right here. And it works with electrons also work the same way. This also works with electrons. And what they would, it produces, it produces an interference band. And let me go back here. It's going to produce how a light, a, a dark, a dark bands and light bands. And those are what's going to produce to show that light behaves like a wave. This is, that again, that same picture right here. Light behaves like a wave. And we're also going to see, this is also, if you take chemistry, this is also how electrons behave. Electrons behave just like, they act like waves too. And so that's why electrons, when you look at uh, electrons, they act not just like a particle, like goes around the nucleus, they act like a wave. And so this is a big deal right here. So way, um, Light behaves like a wave and so do electrons, if you get into chemistry with that here. Um, the next thing here, um, and this is the one that, this is where it, it matters and why some electromagnetic radiation is harmful. This is right here, all right? Uh, photons are packets of energy, of electromagnetic energy. If you have, uh, again, in this picture, they actually show it really well. It's called the photoelectric effect. In the photoelectric effect, the uh, packets of um, there's these little these the light is made up of not just uh, waves; it is also made up of little packets of energy called photons. All right, photons. This is why some electromagnetic radiation is harmful and some is not. 
All right, so with first off, this is right here. This is some uh, metal. And when the light hits it, uh, certain lights cause electrons to move in the metal. And certain lights do not cause it. Which light does not cause any electrons to move in the metal? Which light, which color light does not cause electrons to move in the metal? The red light, all right? Which light does cause electrons to move? Green and? Yeah, and the purple one. Which one causes the electrons to move the most? Purple. All right, so it, you can see that speed, 6.22 times 10 to the fifth meters per second, whereas this is 2.96 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. So some light, now no matter how much, and, I, and this is where Einstein won his Nobel Prize with this. This is, he won his Nobel Prize from explaining this thing here. All right, he said, light does not just act like a wave, but light also acts like a particle. And the reason being, doesn't matter how much light weighs, you put a red light on that metal. It will never remove electrons. It will never, this is actually how solar panels also work. All right, red light doesn't matter. Again, you think if you have, if, you have, uh, if light acts like a wave only, that if you use a lot of red light, you can remove those electrons. Doesn't matter how much, if you had red light, red light, red light, and all this really intense red light, it does not remove any electrons from this metal potassium. But just a little bit of red light, of green light starts removing electrons. It doesn't take a lot. It's, again, just a little bit of green light. And just a little bit of purple light even removes even more electrons. So Einstein says, well, here's the reason why this is. The reason why that green and purple light can remove electrons is because light and electromagnetic radiation doesn't just act like a wave. Because if it acted just like a wave, then it's, the more light you add to it, more red light, that's more intense. That makes it have, it'll be able to remove more electrons. It doesn't just act like a wave. It acts like a wave and a particle. And those particles of energy that are make up electromagnetic radiation are called photons. All right, those are called photons. The purple light had a higher frequency and had, again, that means it had more energy per photon. Purple light had a higher frequency and more energy per photon. More energy per photon. The red light had lower frequency and less energy per photon. The red light had less, had lower frequency and less energy per photon. Less <laughs> energy per photon. All right, so less energy per photon. And so this would explain why it doesn't matter how many red, how much red light you put on that metal, it will never eject electrons or remove electrons. It will never do it because its photons don't have enough energy. The photons are little packets of energy. That's what, how Einstein described them. And so it doesn't matter how much, um, how much light you put on it, that, that this light is made up of photons and the green light has photons with more energy, whereas and purple light has photons with even more energy. The red light has photons with less energy per photon. That's the exact same reason why this light right here is not harmful to us. My cell phone uses radio waves that are not harmful to me because it's, it, yes, cell phone uses waves, but those waves that, those radio waves are also made up of photons, but their photons have so little energy. They can't remove electrons from my DNA or from my proteins. And so therefore they, they're harmless. But things that can do remove electrons is like UV light, X-rays and gamma rays. They have enough energy inside their light or inside their radiation more so we should say. They have more energy in their radiation and therefore they can remove electrons out of, um, out of DNA and out of, out of proteins. And that causes mutations and can cause problems. 
All right. So some radiation is harmful and some is harmless. Our cell phones use radio waves. Their photons have enough energy to remove electrons from our cells or they don't have enough. They don't. So that's why cell phones are harmless. OK, doesn't matter how much you use them. You're not going to get cancer because you're using a cell phone. OK, hear me that. All right. Yes, that's exactly right. X-rays, if you have too many, but now sometimes the benefit of getting an X-ray is outweighs the risk. It can, it could cause a problem, but the benefit of an X-ray can get a risk. Like I get dental X-rays every time, or I, if I have a sus suspected broken bone, I get an X-ray. The the benefit of knowing what the area looks like outweighs the uh, risk of getting a little bit of harmful radiation. Uh, yes. Uh, question. Hey, a blue light. Mm -hmm. I call something to go in the dark. Uh, how does it call something to go in the dark? Yeah, some of that. I don't know. I've got to look that one up. I'm not sure. No, All right. All right. So with that said, I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to check your notes. All right. I'm going to check your notes.